Are you afraid of using your e-file? Well, that's good, and you should be. To respect the e-file is so important in being a good nail technician working with your e-file. You're right, these are eggs on my table. I've got a whole bunch of them. Actually really disappointed in cameraman for this video because I asked him if he would be a model for me. And he refused because once he learned what I'm gonna do to this egg is I am gonna mess it up. I'm gonna show you how a drill really can do some serious damage. In this video, I wanna show you how important it is to know how to work your e-file to your advantage. Otherwise, it can hurt. Let's get started. My Susie's powders and monomer collections are now sold separately at nailcareer.com. First of all, I want to explain, e-file is an electric file. Many clients are actually afraid of an e-file. Why is that? Because somebody has got at them and done some damage or they've heard, right? Their friend has and they pass the word around. So people become a little bit afraid. Many nail technicians are afraid of the e-file. And honestly, you should be because it is a tool. You really got to learn how to work it properly. And that's what I want to show you. And that's what the egg is here for today instead of my finger or a cameraman's. So one of the first things when you get an e-file is anchor. When you get that e-file in your hand, you need to seriously, I can't stress this enough. It is the weirdest, weirdest thing to get used to, but anchoring means you have got to find a point that you can steady this hand and resting it against your table with a client's finger in front of you is not good enough. It's just not good enough. Now it seems harmless when I'm doing it like this, right? Looks fine. The eggshell represents the natural nail plate. The soft egg inside represents what's underneath our nail plate, flesh. So it's really important to maintain control. When I say anchor, it means your pinky or this finger. Every nail technician's different. Y'all can do it different. You could do your first finger if you want. Um, I've always chosen the pinky. So I'm gonna hold my pinky here, okay? So when I say that, it means you wanna find anchor point. So you could put it on your finger that's holding this. You could put it on the customer's finger. You could put it anywhere you want. Just make sure it is somewhere. Also, the reason why I like the anchor point is because you can use that muscle to pull the drill toward you. You probably have an electric shock for me every time I say e-file or yeah. every time I say drill. I so, think so what you want to do is anchor so that you are nice and steady every single time for every movement that you do on the on the egg. <laughs> so one thing I will say is this really matters when you're working with the coarse bits, okay? So Anchoring is crucially important. I think, you know, rather than jumping around, I'm gonna stick with anchoring for a minute. And I'm gonna show you why it's so important. So this, I don't wanna make this about product or, you know, um, brand names or anything. So I'm working with a drill. Eva. Gonna work with an e-file. Oh, I am gonna put a mask on because I don't know what is in the shell of an egg and I don't think I should be breathing it in. You shouldn't be breathing anything in, so I always wear a mask. and. I don't know how long this is gonna take, so I am going to wear a mask because I don't wanna breathe the dust of an eggshell in. Okay. We'll talk about speed next, but right now I wanna talk about this anchoring and why it's so important, because you, you, I'm sure you're gonna hear about it. <laughs> you're gonna hear from it, and you know, you're, any educator that you're going to is gonna say anchor point two, and it, the reason why it's annoying is because it's not natural. It's not natural to stick your finger out any one of these fingers to hold yourself in place. If this feels natural. When I first started doing it, this felt natural. Until you make a mistake. Now what can happen is, so I, here I am with my client, I've got my anchor point, being my pinky in my case, and I am filing the nail. I've got it on a low speed, it's only 5,000 RPMs, but I have a coarse bit here, okay? I'm filing away. If you don't have an anchor point, even if you do have an anchor point, right now I'm just trying to take off the little layers of eggshell. You know, but don't walk on eggshells. They're very, very delicate. This isn't a gel polish I'm trying to take off or an acrylic or a hard gel. I'm just gently filing off a thin, thin layer of color on the egg. But when you're pulling something off really that's resisting you, like a hard gel, an acrylic or a gel polish, 
sometimes if you don't have an anchor point, especially, you can slip and you can, because it's meant to go, it's rotating. So it's gonna, it could catch on a side. When you have your pinky here or another finger, you're stopping it yourself that you can push back. It's helping you push back. So if you're one of those that only file in one direction, that's gonna give you the strength to push back. If you're one of those that goes back and forth, which I'm for both ways, I'm a back and forther. When you go back and forth, it gives you that strength to be able to hang on to it so it doesn't. Now, if you mess up, this is what it's gonna look like. You can go like this and it's gonna be, it's gonna go off the finger, the egg in my case. It can go off and circle around. This is a person's finger, I'm gonna do this for you. you go around and I have done this. So you're filing back and forth on the customer's finger, and if it catches, I guess I'm gonna have to ruin a finger here. If it catches, you can go, you can slide right over top of your finger. You see that? If I did that with any strength, that would have cut right through my flesh. That hurts, and you don't wanna do that <laughs> for many, many reasons. So you can just picture if that was the edge of this bit going through your finger, you would have sliced right through it. That's why it's so, so, so important to make sure that you have a steady grip and you have a anchor point so that your pinky, and believe me, your pinky will get so strong after a while, you'll start to really, really fine tune that muscle. It'll be such a muscle memory, you won't be able to do e-filing without it. So I can't stress that enough. Learn it right from the beginning when you get your e-file. Learn how to anchor somewhere, okay? Number two, we're gonna talk about speed, the RPMs and how much you should use and how much you shouldn't. Now I have my e-file and I'm gonna turn it on. If you're lucky enough to have it digital, you can actually see when you turn it on, how many RPMs are working for you. This is five, so the number five, obviously, and this goes up to, better hold my end piece. This goes up to 35. You'll never use it at 35. Trust me, you shouldn't ever use it at 35. So I'm gonna bring it right down and I'll talk about the different speeds that you need. I found you need an RPM between three, four, and five for prepping the natural nail. Between six and 10 RPMs is for maybe sculpting and pulling off product. You really don't need to go any higher than probably 12 or 13. If you're reaching into that 14, 15 and higher, you think you have to go faster, you don't. All you're doing is really intimidating, possibly your client and maybe even yourself because the faster you go, the more you better have control of that bit. Now the reason why I say that you don't need to go higher than 13, 14 or 15, and if you think you do, you may have a bit issue because this isn't about speed. These machines go that high, just like cars. They go fast, but you don't have to, you don't need to, and you shouldn't. It's the same situation. Just because you can go that fast, doesn't mean you should. So speed is crucially important. And I'll just touch base on the egg, because I don't want to do it on myself. So I'll tell you why too fast is a problem. So let's take this guy way up. Okay, we're gonna turn that up to, let's say 16, okay? I'm gonna wear my mask because I'm gonna file the egg. I don't know what egg dust would do. Do you think anything, Caraman? I mean, you really shouldn't breathe any dust in, really, so I'm just... I don't know. I'll be inhaling it, so we'll find out in a couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. So we're at 16 right now, and I don't feel that you need to do that. This is a coarse bit in here, and if you put any pressure, what you should do to get product off, you can file down, we've already hit flesh. That's the egg, I've already hit flesh. And look what it can do. Yes, we are being dramatic, but it's exactly what can happen if you're working your e-file too fast. It's easy to lose control. It can happen in a split second. We just mowed through that and you don't need to do that. That's, now of course, okay, you're not filing an egg. We're just taking off gel polish and we're taking off, we're taking, whoopsie, that one's a little bit wet. We're taking off gel polish, we're taking off hard gel, we're taking off product quickly for clients, right? Again, if you're going super fast, you take a chance of spinning, you take a chance of heating. 
Heating is one of the biggest problems. When you heat, now listen. This is 22. Sure, you can do it if you know how to work your drill and you've got some control. But if you look away for one split second, or if the client jumps back or turns to look at something and they pull back, you've got no room for error. So I strongly advise, sure, in a controlled situation like the big space like this, but when you're talking a little finger like this, and I've now got my skin next to a giant moving very coarse, or even a fine bit can do some serious damage at this speed. When you are filing like that, yeah, you can take product off pretty quick, but you don't need to. You're taking too many risks. This is my opinion, guys. You're taking too many risks of too many factors that could go wrong. And the reason why I avoid that is because that's what scares people from the drill. Honestly, if I sat down a chair and a nail technician was turning their, I don't, doesn't matter to me who they are, how experienced. If they're turning it up to 22, my first reaction is maybe they've got the wrong bits. If they have to go that high to take stuff off, they're probably using the wrong bits. Nothing wrong with the coarse bit, love them. But you only need to go up to probably a 12, 13, at the very most. This is a 12. And look how effective. That's a 12. That's a lot of power. When you work too fast, you got the speed too high, that's when you can get an incredible burn. And I'm telling you, it is a searing, hot, comes on fast, quick burn. And you may do the same move to the client at 10 o'clock and the 12 o'clock is the one complaining about it. You're doing the same speed and they're like, oh, 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 it hurts. Everybody has a different pain tolerance level. I actually have quite sensitive nail beds, so maybe that's why I've designed it, that I don't want to go higher than a 12 or a 13. And maybe that's why my clients are very, very comfortable with the e-file. Even if they've got a nasty lift or something that's happened, I can still get in there and gently pull up that acrylic because I know how to work the bits and I know how to work the e-file. My clients aren't afraid of that. And that's what really the goal that you want to get to. Three, pressure. It can work for you and against you. Pressure determines how much you're taking off. And the more pressure, of course, the more heat you can cause. Now you can go low pressure and cause heat. That may be because your bits aren't working, but you can go high pressure, harp, high RPMs, high pressure on the nail and cause a lot of heat too. So it's not always heat is related to speed. It can also be related to very dull bits but you want to eliminate any possibility of hurting you or the client in any way, because once you do, you're going to ruin that experience for that client or yourself for a very long time. So if you're afraid of a drill or an e-file, this could be one of the reasons why. Also too, you don't want to go anywhere near those high RPMs near the natural nail. We want to have a nice low for the natural nail. Four bits. Let's discuss the basic bits you need to get started. Bits are crucial to your success, the client's experience and your experience, because you can be so frustrated if you don't have the right bits. We have so many bits to choose from, and I love a lot of the bits that I'm using, but honestly, you really only need about four or five of the right bits. All the other ones are just extra little bits you really don't need but love to have because it can make your job a little bit quicker, easier, whatever you want. But the most essential bits you need is your mandrel. This is where you're gonna prep your natural nails. This is a mandrel here, and this is an arbor band. And we are gonna slip that arbor band. Oopsie. That one looks well used. No, this one's brand new. Oh, it's this white. This is called a zebra. Yeah, it's one you've oh, never no. seen before, actually. I've never seen that, no. Yeah, they're quite nice. So they're friction fitted on here. We wanna pop it on there. You can get them in fine, medium, and coarse. Now, because I mostly use a mandrel and arbor band for prepping the natural nail, I always use a fine, it's probably a little too fine, coarse is too coarse, but medium is just right for prepping a natural nail. Now, I'm not saying you can't use other bits to prep a natural nail, but if you are having any lifting issues, it might be why. I find this is brilliant for prepping the natural nails. Even if you have a person who has a chronic lifter, this can certainly help. Use a new one. If you find there's lifting, it may be that it's getting old. So do replace this often. Okay, so that's the first bit I'm going to recommend. The second bit 
is a bit that you want to do all your sculpting, pulling off product, shaping, um, forming the nail, taking all that bulk and either getting rid of it or when you apply it all on for your application, you want to sculpt and shape it. I would highly recommend a medium bit for that. And again, I don't want to get into companies and stuff. A lot of great companies, um, but there's different shapes that you can get. And here's a sample of some. So these are all mediums. This one's quite coarse and chunky, but it is still a medium. I mean, it could be classified wrong, but I think it is a medium. This is a ceramic medium. These are carbides and this is ceramic. Now, one thing that's nice about this, see this round, softer top? That's called a safety bit. So if you have any issues going around the cuticles, and that's the hard, hard area. So don't be hard on yourself for that. We all love this safety bit because the other option is a square tip like that. See that? around the cuticle, that can be scary. So this can be very effective. But these are all medium bits. These all do the same thing, which is sculpting, shaping, removing product quite aggressively. And I could say that's about a 12 or a 13 RPM, right? So these work very, very effectively. I, I love these kind. Um, and the shape really is just something whatever you are you really like to work with. I prefer the barrel shape. I just find it takes it off much more evenly. Sometimes these shapes, it's all about how you hold it, but not what you get used to. But I prefer this shape. It's, I think it's brilliant for that. So the next bit I highly recommend, I'm going to put that one over here, just representing the medium bit. And the next one I would recommend would be this bit. You don't really need this little thing on here. That's just to protect the dust from going into your e-file. But see that little guy right there? I love this bit. Worked years without it. We did have a cone shape bit but they've improved it and I do like this a little bit better. It's not 100% that you have to have it, but it will make your nail life easier if you include this into your like top three or four bits that you wanna have. The reason why this one is so great because it can really clean up the cuticle, right? On, but you've got to really learn how to work this guy. This is all about angles, which is my next topic. <laughs> but you really gotta learn how to work it, but it can be hugely to your advantage. But it's also very good for going underneath and filing away any little ridge, any little anything in there that you and the client want to get out there. So this is an advantageous bit to have. I would include it in my top must-have bits. I do love that. So that really kind of, I know there's only three there, but if I had to really pare it down to the, just the three that I could get away with using, these would be it, honestly these would be it. So you might be thinking, okay, you've got those three bits, but what would you use to finish? I would go right back to the mandrel. That's what I would do to finish. So I would prep, sculpt, remove acrylic and all that, do your little touch-ups, and then I go back to the mandrel again to finish it. And then I would finish off with some finishing files before I put oil on a nail polish, or you can, you can actually leave it with the mandrel and uh, dust free it and put your gel top coat on. So it's pretty, pretty simple. So I do have to say, a lot of great bits out there and you can personalize it to you, but I'm just saying, you're gonna really pare it down to a very, very small amount. That's what you could get away with, okay? Which leads me to the next important is all about angle. That would be the fifth most important thing. Okay, so angle. Let's start with this little tiny skinny bit. Great bit. But if you use it wrong, it can be really damaging. So again, I work in around a six or a seven on an average for what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got this bit, like I say, fantastic bit. If you're going, and I could do my own fingers here. I could show you for the good stuff because I don't want to damage my own nails, right? So for the cuticle, this cuticle looks a little rough. So I could just go around the cuticle like this to smooth it out. But it's all about angle. You need to keep it as pretty much parallel as much as you can with a tiny little bit of lift. So the reason why I'm saying that is because here's the proper, see how much ground I'm covering? Covering a nice little area, but if I put the end, cause you think a pointy bit, most people kind of grab it up and they kind of do, this would be wrong to use this bit. See that tiny little area you'd be covering? And honestly, you're just digging in to the natural nail because at the cuticle where you're gonna be using this bit the most, you want it to be 
the thinnest, really. Your acrylic, hopefully, will be the thinnest. And if it's not, it's a little thick and you're trying to dig it out to get it, right? But once you get there, if you go a little bit further, you take a great possibility of diving into that person's cuticle and causing it to bleed, right? Which is what we don't want to do. So what we don't want to do is this. So tip up, we don't want to do that. We want to lay it as pretty parallel. See that nice wide marking there? That's what we want. We want that nice wide spot. Okay, I'm going to show you the importance of doing that with the other bits. So this is the mandrel when you're doing the natural nail. Remember, this is for the natural nail prep. Again, working on about a 5,000 RPM, 6,000, 7,000, somewhere in there. And again, I would probably work on a three or four for your natural nail. And then, well, let's do it, let's show you. So this is about a three, and this is how gentle, and all about angles, nice and flat, see? I'm gonna go around the cuticle a little bit. Nice and flat, that's what I'm working with on the nail. Oh, oh you know what I forgot? Me mask. See, when I'm talking to y'all, I don't want a mask in between, but I really don't know what egg dust would do. <laughs> and I don't want to find out. Okay, so then if I go up to about a six or a seven, when I'm sculpting and shaping my egg <laughs> nail, I want to keep that flat again. And I'm sculpting and I'm taking off a little bit here, taking off a little bit here. See how I'm keeping it nice and flat? keeping it nice and even. That also helps for your nail to be smooth and even when you're done. Even if you're trying to take off a little spot. See that? That's good. That's the line you want. Perfect. But what you don't want is this. Do you see the diff? It's minimal. But on a nail, it's a big difference. Also wouldn't feel very good to the client. You want to keep it very parallel. So it is all about angles. This is very flat. This, I'm pointing it down more, and I'm it look like I'm trying to get one area, and look, and I'm just digging in that one spot. You just don't want to do that, okay? So it's all about keeping your angle parallel to the nail, okay? Now let's see what happens with a course. If you take a course, you look at the teeth on this thing. I mean, that is something. That's a bit that means business. I call these bits in particular the hamburger bit. And I'm not trying to do that for dramaticism, but I guess I am, really, because I'm trying to really push the point. I tell it to all my students, oh, we got the hamburger bit. I just want to be reminded of this bit can turn your finger into hamburger. The other ones can too, if you put a lot of pressure and a lot of speed to it, but this will do it in no time at all, with very little pressure and very little speed. So be very, very careful with this guy. That's what I mean, you should be very, very cautious and afraid of that drill because it can do some damage if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this one pretty parallel. It's teethy as it is. It runs pretty smooth, pretty nice. So you can see how much product you can, and now with a little bit more pressure, I'm taking the next layer of the egg off. See that? Very nicely. But again, if I slip, I am going to cut and turn my pinky, and I've done it. All this comes from experience, you guys. I have turned my finger into hamburger. It was a hamburger mess. And that's what we called it, hamburger. It was awful. It makes your heart just stop. See, I'm trying to help you not go there because it's it's not a place you want to go. Okay, look at that. It's beautiful. Look how it's taking that off. And I'm only at a six. That's it. So if I was taking some this way, look at how much it's taken off. Even if I file the parts that I've already filed, only at a six. I'm gonna turn it up to a 21. Yeah, you can do it. It's taking off stuff too. But you're taking a risk that if you, you can hear it. If you slip or move, this is an egg. This is huge. Fingers aren't this big. You're working in a tiny little area. And when you're working with fingers, you've got flesh all the way around. So be very, very careful with that. Okay, so let's talk about, that was the four most, was it four or five caramel? I think it was four most important <laughs> things that you need to know. And I have to mention, practice on yourself. Those silicone hands and those fake hands, the plastic ones, those are all really, really great when you're getting first started, honestly. But 
it's really no match for a finger. But how do you kind of go at a finger like this? Well, practice on yourself. Get some experience down with the practice hands or with an egg. Anything you can get your hands on to work with like that, that's not on a person. And then as soon as you develop those skills where you think you're ready to go the next step, do it on yourself first. The best way to learn is by doing it on yourself. It doesn't matter if you don't want to wear nails or not. If you are looking at this as a career and you want people to wear them, you've got to put them on yourself so you can really feel what it feels like. Experiencing the file on your finger will help you understand what your client is feeling. Let's recap. One, anchor. Two, speed. Three, pressure. Four, bits. Five, angle. And practice on yourself. If you're not comfortable with an e-file, you can still do everything with your hand files. If you want to learn more about filing and sculpting, check this video out. <laughs> <laughs>